Hey guys, it's Mike and Matt. If you're here in the show on Wednesday, that means we're going to be at the Philly Punchline uh, tonight doing our live taping of the sit down. Yeah, we're going to be out there. We're going to be having some laughs with some Philly comics. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be out meeting the fans. So buy a ticket. Your your, plugs, your plugs are like the template of a of a plug where it's like laughs, <laughs> beer, <laughs> jokes. Yeah, I didn't replace comics. anything yet. Yeah, yeah, right. You Oops. just you just turned it in. You just turned in the template. <laughs> Oops. Um. Anyway, but yeah, Matt's gonna be there, so that'll be fun. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna be talking to some Philly comics about Philly crime. And um, you should be there. Go to punchlinephilly.com if you haven't bought your tickets yet. Because let me tell you something, that front table is selling out really fast, okay? <laughs> yeah. We're about to fill up all eight seats of it. Um, no, but come out and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Okay. What's up, everybody? It's the boy. It's the original sit-down crew here tonight hanging out. Um, Frank picked the song. It's, um, it's a great song. It's Little Peep. What's the genre again? It's it's rap. Yeah, you it's said like emo, emo rap. E- emo trap. Emo trap. Okay. I'm not a fan, but I, I'm not I'll a fan appreciate of it. No, it's fine. It's just good music. Why don't you like it? I don't know. It's like it seems a little angsty to me. Like I might have liked it when I was in college or high school. What do you like now? I don't know. I like I like everything. I like uh, like country and you know right, pop enough. and whatever. Country. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for being here. We got a fun episode planned for you today. A little uh, little low-key episode because uh, we're getting ready for our live show, which is, uh, well, tonight, I guess, if you're, yeah. you're hearing it, because this show comes out Wednesday, Wednesday night in Philly, our first, um, our first live show. But uh, how are you doing, Frank? I'm great. I'm, uh, got a lot going on. <laughs> A lot of things in development. Well, you got a you okay, got a pod, okay. you got a, you got your own podcast coming yeah, out. Yeah, should I should I plug it now? Yeah, go ahead and plug it now. Right, yeah, my, my podcast is launching in two weeks, mm-hmm. November eighth. It's called Terra Dome, and uh, it'll be everywhere. You know, in the usual, uh, I don't know, Apple, right? Where's Apple it, yeah. podcast, be? Matt, Matt Stitcher. Tells, Matt, Matt's uh, mm-hmm. Matt's <laughs> my, go, my he's my guardian Google angel. He tells Google me what to play, do. Uh, I call. I, 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 you're I text my, Matt. You're taking my best guy. No, I just ask him what to do. Like, yeah. how do you plug in the, the microphones? Well, how do you edit the show? Yeah, mm-hmm. if you just scroll through. You're going to uh, edit your show? Uh-huh. You, you already edit your show? Doing, I've done He's it already. already doing it. I got three episodes all edited. Just imagine Frank, like, being like, you know, I kind of sound like a right-wing lunatic. Uh, this, <laughs> yeah, 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 Maybe I cross He's the like line doing, a little like, bit. meticulous editing. I don't, edit, yeah. I don't edit anything out. Let you me tell you something. You don't take stuff out. I don't take nothing out. Somebody right. uh, messaged me and said, Frank, I didn't like what I said. I said, nah, it's good. Leave it in. I'm out. I don't take anything out. Yeah. Uh, Why is everybody such a, such a fucking coward nowadays? Because uh, uh, they have a lot of guilt. Mm-hmm. I have none of that. <laughs> We're gonna. I got a, I got a, a Patreon page, too. Uh-huh. Terra Known Podcast. So there's going to be one free episode a week and one... One paid episode a week, so it's five dollars to get uh, an additional episode per week. Nice. Okay. Cool. That 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 show is gonna go one of two ways, I think. <laughs> it's gonna be. I'm gonna listen to every single episode. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's I gonna don't be know a if dumpster I, I fire. Listen, <laughs> I've already <laughs> listened to. I, the FBI is gonna show up at your door and just be like, "Can we just sniff around here?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I have uh, black people on the show, gay people. I got chicks coming in. Mm-hmm. It's a very diverse uh, group. I, I book <laughs> nice. four people a week. Who have you had on the show so far? Um, so far, I've had uh, Mateo Pascal, nice, and and Kevin Janaway. He's like a flame boy and gay yeah, guy. Yeah. Those are two distinct voices. Too. I got I had um, Matt and Mike from Comedy Fight Club, and now this week I got Petey coming in and Cyrus McQueen. I got uh, some female comics coming in. Get nice. get a little estrogen on the show. Yeah, because people think people are under the impression that I hate women, but you're going to see a different side of me when when I have women on the show. You really do have surprisingly good taste in comedy. Oh, thanks. Your taste is very honest, <laughs> and it's it's objective, and it's not because you know, there's no objectivity times, anymore. There's no meritocracy. No. There's no objectivity. Everybody's just so amazing. Everybody's great. Right. And if I say somebody's not good, they're like, no, like you can't say somebody's not good. There's yeah. a, like seventy five percent of the comics. It are is terrible. weird right. that people won't accept your opinion on it. Like, yeah. you told me that thing earlier off mic, and I was just like, I think I just tried to defend how I felt. Right. But I, I like let you keep your opinion. I wasn't like, no, right. you're not allowed to say that about this person yeah that's a weird thing because i feel like 10 years ago like in the city there were like good comics and there were terrible comics <laughs> that were even like a little bit fun to watch but now it's just like everybody is but the terrible comics never got on late night television now they do 
This terrible comment is getting on late night television just because they happen to be a woman or a homosexual or a South Asian. <laughs> South, South Asian. Yeah, they're very hot right now. And, and safe black guys. South and Asians are safe hotter Safe black than- guys never go out of style. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's who, that's who they want. Yeah. South Asians, homosexuals. I mean, not that they, they shouldn't be on TV, but I mean, they are going out of their way not to book straight white men. Mm-hmm. For what? Just because Trump has a fucking attitude? I'm not Trump. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were talking about this with, with uh, Frank Leoti too. He was like, like Sebastian's like the only Italian that they let in. Well, he's been around for 25 years. Yeah. I mean, there's no new guys. I mean, you're, you're a new guy. Anthony DeVito's a new guy. I don't see people throwing opportunities at you, your heads. Yeah. And you're both great comics. Yeah. You know, they're very prejudiced. They are. They are. It's a, pre- it's a uh, anti-Italian defamation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of it. I don't care. I'm not, I, I know why they don't. Yeah. Like, listen. The half the group is they're, like they're making me. Games. They're making me who I am. They're creating me. Yeah. You know, like, like, they, like they created Jason. Remember they created Jason? They beheaded his mother. He came mm-hmm. out of the lake. I'm ready to come out of the fucking lake, baby. Nice. What um, we need is we need that. We need that Jules Verne ranking system again. We need, what was that? we need all the comics ranked on some random, like, uh, like uh, what is it, like a hot, a hot, uh, hot mail account yeah. website. You remember that kid, that open micer who went oh, crazy I remember and that, he yeah. ranked all the comics and like Mike. Oh, m- Vegan Jules. Yeah, Vegan Jules. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. happy to report. Yeah, and I was like 84, then Drew Michael <laughs> you know? was like number one. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is I was, this? I was, tw- I was 12. You were 12? You were and so I, disrespectful. You know, I I, it was I disrespectful. Very listen, disrespectful. Listen, I think I'm a great comic, right? But Mike's doing it a lot longer than me, right? Yeah. So I said, how am I 12 and Mike is like 85? He goes, well, to be honest, he's a little racist for me. <laughs> <laughs> He did Which like he did like three thousand comics. Or so how many did that's he do? That's not true. First of all, that's not true. <laughs> he's a little. Uh, he's a, his comedy's a little racist. Right? <laughs> oh god, that poor kid. Yeah, well, yeah, he's a little fucked up. You, well, you know what it is? He's like a rich kid from the West Coast, and um, I, he thinks because he you're wealthy, you, you get stuff. You yeah. know, some people are in, like rich, rich kids are entitled. Mm-hmm. He's got a little bit of that kind of an attitude. I mm-hmm. get along with him, but I understand where other people are coming from. That does happen a little bit, but it but it seems like a lot of them are are getting the jobs. A lot of rich kids are just kind of handed the the. Yeah, I mean Saturday Night Live. You know what's funny? I just watched the documentary Love Gilda. Yeah, it's really good, and I always loved her since I'm a kid. But you know the thing that disappointed me in the documentary? She came from a very wealthy background. Uh-huh. I'm like, what does everybody from Saturday Night Live come from? No, a everybody. Background? I mean, that's the only way you're free to pursue. I think you know, so. An and and I, I still love her. Yeah. I think she's a great performer, and she was a big part of my childhood. But I would have liked her a little bit more if she came from working class roots. Who did come from working class roots, though? Clint Eastwood did. Didn't like well, Eddie, Mur- Eddie Murphy. Did he? Yeah. 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 Didn't like Chris Farley. I want to say. Oh uh-huh. yeah. Like some of those like Second City guys, like they like lived in a van. <laughs> they just like made it work. There's a comic living in a van right now. I don't want to say his name, but he lives in a van. No, this podcast is all about names. <laughs> and he doesn't just live in a van. He's also like starting fights with all the other comedians. Okay. Mm, <laughs> and one time, this guy right. said, "I'm gonna punch this guy in the face." I said, "Leave me alone." He lives in a van. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a hard life living in a van. Especially now, the... it's starting to get cold out. What's the um? What's the theme of your podcast? Is it? Uh, are you just gonna talk to Nothing. people? And yeah. it's just like me and my 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 opinion on everything. You know, I I never plan anything. We we press record. And we go. The that's first, not true. You said you themed the episode. Well, uh, Each episode has a theme. We, we're theming a couple. Like we're going to do a horror film one. Yeah. Uh, the first episode I talked about A Star Is Born a lot. By the way, it's a great movie. Okay. Did you see it? <laughs> no. Take not yet. Shelby to see it. Okay. So fucking good. Oh my god! I saw it the first uh, the day the, the the night before we did the first episode. I saw uh, Star Is Born. What's that? What's, you're going to answer the fucking door in the middle of the of the, the podcast? <laughs> the hell kind of fucking? What the hell kind of shit is that? Are we gonna pause it or we're gonna keep going? Nah, we'll keep going. I think we could I think we'll be okay. All right. Yeah, you gotta um, see a Star Wars moment. It's so fucking good. Yeah. Lady Before Gaga. the show, Frank was like, Matt, stop being such a Midwesterner. Yeah. Yeah. He is a Midwesterner. Yeah. Not in a good way. <laughs> what, what, what's he answering the door for? Who is that? I don't know. Maybe it's UPS or something. UPS? Yeah. It better be important. Yeah. Matt, I thought we could do the show without you, but uh it doesn't seem like we can. What is it? What was it? Why? It was just somebody leaving a package. So why don't you let them just... Why did you have to answer the door? I was just making yeah, sure. No. You know, that's... Maybe, uh, maybe Shelby and her lover forgot the keys to the place. <laughs> yeah, she just shows up with another man. <laughs> oh, well, well, this is awkward. Well, if, yeah. if, if Shelby ever cheated on you, would you take her back? Uh, Yeah, I don't know. 
Mm, that's a well, tough call. We'd have to cross for that you, road. that's a tough call. For you, that's a tough call. We'd if have to cross Deb, that road. If Deb fucks came. someone, I would 100% have to take her back. Yeah? Yeah. Why? She she gets a couple passes. <laughs> okay. Just Deborah? Yeah. What? I'll, just for, I'll I, pass just I feel like from the way I was in the past, uh, you know, yeah. kind of flirty and stuff. Yeah, yeah. kind of. You'd you just know. get mad more. Yeah. But, but you were talking about that. You used to flirt with girls when you were in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, not, I, I didn't execute, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't control myself. Yeah. I just have that animal <laughs> magnetism that lures girls in. They, they gravitate to me. <laughs> they come over, and then, you know, one thing leads to another. <laughs> I just like the, 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 the promise of pussy. You know what I mean? It's right. exciting. That it might happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not enough to be loved. I want to be desired sexually by others. <laughs> by, by everybody. By everybody. Yeah. I even, even like it when even guys men, yeah. I even like when guys like me. I, That's I, right. I, I take any compliment I can Many get. sides. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. All right. That that is like a thing though. I, I and, and I feel like we're probably ignoring that a little bit, but it's like, yeah, you do want to feel like everybody wants to uh have sex with you. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a Except for children. <laughs> no, children do. Speaking of children yeah. and sex, that fucking movie It is like a pedophile's wet dream. Did you see it? it? Yeah. The Pedoph- new one? Yeah, it's fucking all about pedophilia. It is? Yeah, well, first of all, the girl's fucking a father in the movie. She is? Yeah, you didn't did you see it? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I just Spoiler don't remember. Spoiler alert. They imply that. Doesn't she kill him? Yeah. That what, she killed him because he's fucking her. Oh. And then on, and then there's like a scene where all the kids in their underwear. Right. Like it's excessive. Right. So mm. who the fucking produced this? Yeah. Frank's like, I can't, I can't take this. I'm out of here. <laughs> it was really disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, you know what they say about Hollywood. Hollywood's crazy. What, what, yeah. You know, they're so, fucking phonies the way they... On, on on award season, they give every award to the movies about the Holocaust or black people or AIDS, but then they're condoning pedophilia. Phony fucks. <laughs> right. How are they condoning pedophilia? <laughs> With the movie It. The movie It is about pedophiles. It is? So yeah. the, the clown is a pedophile? Well, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't well, see it. Uh, I'm saying it's, it's, made by, it's made by pedophiles. There's a scene where they buy the watering hole and they're all in their underwear mm-hmm. and they're all 14. Mm-hmm. Why, what, why, is, why is that? Don't anybody have a bathing suit? Nobody's got bathing trunks? <laughs> Everybody's in their drawers. <laughs> Did you write a letter to the studio? And you're like, no, I just and they're making a sequel. When it ended, t- they're like chapter one. Now they're gonna have chapter right. two. Right, What's right. gonna happen to chapter two? And chapter two, they're gonna be older. Yeah. So it won't be that bad. I don't know. <laughs> well, before we get into our, uh, our the meat of our show, why don't I want to ask you about the? Are you following the news at all? Go ahead. Uh, Did you follow the? I I, I I let it go in one ear out the other, but I have right. an opinion on everything. Are you following the story about the uh, the, the Saudi journalist? What happened with him? Um, so this journalist, his name's Jamal Khashoggi. He was a, uh, Saudi guy living in, um, America. He was a contributor for the Washington Post. Um, he went into the, uh, Turkish, um, embassy and, uh, never came out. They think a Saudi hit team assassinated him, but he used to be kind of close to the, the king of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he sort of became a critic of, of that regime. Is he, is he American? Yeah. No, he's, he's Saudi. Oh, who gives a shit? Let him die. He's a citizen, All right. though. He's like a U.S. citizen. Well, right? He's like a kill, U.S. citizen. You know, let them kill their own. I'd say, we He's stay, a U.S. citizen, We should stay though. completely out of this. <laughs> let them handle their own business. Let mm-hmm. everybody handle their own business. Mm-hmm. I don't care. What about, the, but we do business with them, though, on, in you know, we buy their oil. Yeah, well, we need oil for cars. Mm-hmm. We need to stop driving. Right. But you don't care that they kill the journalist. People get killed all the time. Right. We're going to cry about everybody. <laughs> Worry about your own family. Your family's still alive? Uh, yeah. Good. Nobody's killing them, right? No. God bless them. Right. <laughs> what if someone does kill them? Well, then we fuck. That's a different story. Uh, you didn't say that. Right. Then we shoot the fucking guys. Yeah, I would just, if I ever sent anyone to like negotiate with you, I'd like have to make sure their past was chalked with like all these misfortunes. So you could never do that where it's like, is your family dead? <laughs> like, oh, they are. Okay. Um, I got a good way of looking at the world. I keep it basic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all these cry every liberals man. they find they, you know a lot of these liberals are rich white kids who have no problems mm. so they're looking for something to be dramatic about mm-hmm. I got a lot to be dramatic about it's nothing to do with politics right you know but you're not alarmed at all when you see like when Trump says uh, I'm a nationalist or he doesn't say doesn't, that yeah, he, he did said, say he, he said, said it today at a oh, yeah? rally yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe we want to hear it we you could we could look it up we could play it what does that mean what, what, what does that mean nationalist uh, that means, means he likes like the a, national league he likes uh he likes America. <laughs> yeah. I, I like America. Right. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, okay. I like America better than Italy. Yeah. Yeah. You ever been to Italy? 
No, but I'm this is I'm I'm born here. <laughs> right. So I'm I'm patriotic. You're loyal, more loyal to. I'm loyal America. to America. Like right. if America fought Italy, it'd be no question I would be shooting guineas in the face. <laughs> no, so like a nationalist, all that that like basically means. I really you don't like your, Italians from Italy. Like yeah. when I meet them, oh. Why? They're, they're, they're so fucking stupid. Yeah. They're, they're so fucking cheap. They don't go for spit. They never pick up a check. They don't tip. Oh, they never tip. They're fucking ridiculous and they got bad hygiene. Yeah. What's go for spit? They don't go for money. They don't go, they don't fucking spend a dime. They fucking wear the same jeans for 30 years. Mm. What about, uh, what about the Brett Kavanaugh thing? Did you follow that? Yeah, I've been following that very closely. I got a lot of opinions <laughs> about it. Listen, I don't like Brett Kavanaugh because I don't like conservative judges. I don't like his policies. Mm hmm. As far as him taking out his dick at a frat party, what do you think goes on at a frat party? I mean, if I went to a frat party and somebody didn't take their dick out, I'd be like, this is a fucking terrible party. Yeah. What kind of party are you inviting me to? Yeah. Who cares about us? Everybody's the sex police. You can't get laid 30 years ago. All of a sudden, this girl never said nothing. He, she sees he's about to get a good job. She goes, wait a minute. Uh, I didn't like when he took his dick out at the party. Fucking opportunist. Well, what did she have to gain from that, though? Oh, she just fucking did this spiteful, these broads. Yeah, but you think that was all just I bet you if him? I ever blew up, a lot, my, a lot of my exes would come out of woodwork and go, oh, he was rude to me. He was emotionally abusive. Mm -hmm. Fuck out of here. Yeah. I don't listen to any. So many women are fucking pains in the asses, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some good ones. There's like five or six good ones, but the rest of them are fucking annoying. Right. Top five good ones. Go. My grandmother, <laughs> the blessed mother. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> I gotta think on the right, yeah, I'll give you can come back to <laughs> but, me. But but what do you, what do you think she really had to gain from doing that? She just wants to fucking make. She just wants to hurt him. She just wants the attention. No, not the attention for her. She just wants to hurt this guy. Who maybe he didn't uh, he didn't love her. Why would she want to hurt him? Because they're vindictive. These fucking girls. Mm -hmm. For getting attacked. She didn't. Get, she didn't get attacked. I mean, her account of it. Yeah. Or now, why why didn't she bring it up? Why did she bring it up thirty years later? He's been around for a while. Right. I don't yeah. like this delayed reaction. Right. Well, yeah, I guess like rape therapies come a long way, but rape therapy. Um, they figured out sometimes it takes uh, longer for people to. There should be a statute of limitations on accusations. Around. That's what I say. Yeah, I was this raped. Oh, I didn't. Know I don't that. fucking complain about it. I wrote one joke and that's it. <laughs> you know, I did, I, I have a one, I have a one liner. <laughs> Not everyone's a comedian though. No, yeah, I have Frank. a one, I have a one liner it's about when I was material to everybody and. Uh, I did it at a mic one time, and somebody messaged me and told me I was brave. I was like, get the fuck out of my life. <laughs> That's really funny. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but, yes, but it doesn't, it doesn't bother you. My rape? Yeah. It did when I was like, you know, when I was real, real young, and I, I never How told, old were you? It, when I was six. No, oh, oh, fuck. And it was, it was like on multiple occasions. Ooh, I'm sorry that From happened. my cousin. But yeah. uh, I, really wasn't, I wasn't sodomized, but it was uh, other stuff. Yeah. And uh, really sorry that happened to you. Well, it's not a big deal. Like I, the first time it is a big deal, the, though. The first time I said it out loud was when I told my sister when because uh, the guy who did it came to my sister's wedding uh -huh. and she sent uh, thank yous to everybody but him. Uh -huh. And, you know, uh, it was at your sister's wedding. Yeah, he came to my sister's wedding. You just ruined your sister's wedding with, with your rape. <laughs> no, I didn't ruin it. He came. Uh -huh. And then I told her uh, about it. Yeah. And then um, she was very supportive about it. And then uh when I became a comic, I just made a joke about it, and that made it really okay. Mm -hmm. And every comic has a fucking story. Yeah. So that kind of shit doesn't. But but it did, when I was young, it did cripple me. It, it did like I couldn't go to a movie if it went. If I went to a movie and it had a rape scene in it, mm -hmm. I would have like a panic attack. Mm -hmm. Like it happened when I saw Sign of Fever the first time. Oh, it yeah. happened when I saw Kids. So really? you're saying you were like so that's like super traumatic though. Yeah, you it were was, like yeah. bad with it for like thirty years. Almost. I was bad with it for about thirty years. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Uh, but I'm okay now. This does seem to be like a common thing. I mean, we can keep this in the show, right? Yeah. This does seem to be like a common thing where people go, yeah, she, you know, she knew what she was doing. She went to a party. I got raped once. And also another thing, he's a great judge. <laughs> and it, it, it just seems, like, it just seems like it's pretty common where, where that, where it happens to people and they just kind of like gloss over it. And I feel like you, you, they don't let themselves have the, uh, have the pain or experience or process the, the trauma. They love, they love being empathetic about it. Like I was at a mic one time and some girl was talking about that she was raped. But that is funny that someone said you're very brave. Yeah, they tell me that because you're more brave for saying the n word at Mike's instead yeah, of yeah, that's uh, brave. Yeah, I, I I remember one time some girl was like, I was raped. I was like, me too. When I was six, yeah, and she was like, oh my god, it she is wanted, a very knee jerk she, thing. Where they she go, wanted to brave. bond with me. I'm like, I don't want to fucking talk about right, it. Right, right. You know, you're right. not the only one who's, who's fucking uh, uh, somebody tried to fuck with you. And also, that's not your whole personality. No, nah, it's not my life. I don't give a shit. Yeah. The person who did it is the piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I'm a good guy. Yeah. 
But but do you ever think that like maybe it's your fault or? No, I blame my my parents mm-hmm. for letting me sleep over there. And then I also have a uh, I'm a little my mother's passed away, but my father's still around. I'm a little upset with them that they didn't protect me. They didn't. When it happened, they tried to sweep it under the rug. They go, okay, you're not going to sleep here anymore because I found out about it. They didn't say, do you need, can, do you want to talk about it? Should we? They didn't try to help me. Mm-hmm. They didn't, they didn't like, they weren't like. Did the cousin um, die? Is he dead? No, now? he's still around. He's still they around. They didn't ever like talk about it. And when my sister told my father about it, he didn't fucking ever bring it up. Mm-hmm. Like they weren't like nice to me about it. Like they never, like, they just said, maybe he'll forget about it. Yeah. You know? Really? I never forgot about it. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dude. That's what awful. What are you going to do? Yeah. Right. Well. This is a feel-good episode. What else is in the news, huh? <laughs> I, I assure you, on my podcast, we don't talk about anything sad like this. Yeah. yeah. We, we make fun of rape victims. Does it, does it feel better for you? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Does it feel better for you to get it out and talk about it? When I first told my sister, uh, yeah, because I, I think you feel shame. You feel like judge. You feel like everybody knows. You feel like it's your yeah. fault? No, I never felt it was my fault. You never felt it was your fault? No. Uh-huh. I don't think anything is my fault. All right. Yeah. It's a different problem. Now. Well, that's good. Well, we're going to spend the day, the podcast, the episode. Um, we're going to talk about some gangster movies from the past. And Mike did a lot of research. He watched trailers. <laughs> I watched two trailers. <laughs> and uh, I gave him a yeah, list. I look. gave him a list of eight movies. You could have watched all eight of them. Right. I, I, who has the fucking time to watch two movies? I, I, I don't have any time. I watch time. two movies a day. You do? Yeah, I watch Get Out. Not all of us walk dogs every day and have. I have a dog. I got to take out twice a day. What what do you do? Uh, I'm a camera operator. Where do you watch your movies? I have ten hour days in my room. Yeah, you don't work. Yeah, I work three hours a day. He figured he has he has like a nice dog walking route with like nice clients. I work from eleven to two, Mm -hmm. and then I go home and make rice and beans, Mm. and then I go to the open mic. You know what's so funny is like that's how you live when you're like twenty twenty one. You're like, yeah, things will get better someday. Yeah, but, and I mean, I, I, like wherever you're at in life, you know, I don't want to judge anything. But yeah, I feel like you perfected good. the formula because like you have a low overhead, you eat well, yeah. you know, you're gonna you're gonna age well. I'm and vegan. You, you got like a nice. You're vegan now. Yeah. No more dairy. No more dairy. No. How no do you feel? Protein. Great. Yeah. I lost I lost an additional ten pounds. I'm one thirty five. Nice. Do you miss chicken? No, I haven't had chicken since the nineties. Oh, yeah. What's what's bad with chicken? It's an animal. Yeah, the living, breathing thing that was fucking t- killed for your pleasure. Gotcha. You you, you really are like a fascinating uh, <laughs> character. You're like, yeah, you know these girls with their fucking fake rapes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. don't be mean to chickens. <laughs> Animals are so nice. Yeah, women they are. are mean. They are. I like some women. I feel that way too. Just the connection I've had with my with my dog. It's like I don't know how. Somebody came over to me the other day, a comic. He goes, Frank, can I ask you a question? I go, Yeah. He's like, You're always saying nice things about your mother and nice things about your grandmother, and you seem like you had a, you know a lot of love in your life. Why are you so aggressive on stage towards women? I said, Because the ones I go out with are pieces of shit. <laughs> right. I, my mother and my grandmother. What do you think? That's how you end up hating women because your mother is bad. No, my mother's great. It's the, it's just, I haven't <laughs> met anybody as great as her. Yeah, I'm sure I will. I'm very optimistic. I'm, I'm optimistic. Some people do when hate she, when women she pass from away? their mothers. My mother passed away in 2011. Okay, yeah. but you know what it is? I was telling somebody else this. Italians have a really high expectation because our mothers are so good to us. Mm-hmm. See, Jewish guys, their mothers are shrews, so they're like you know, I'm expecting a bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But Italian guys, we get we get catered to by our mothers. So, uh, like, there was times when I was with my ex, and she would be very mean to me. Yeah. And I would walk out of the room and get, like, you know, like, like choked I'm up. I'm going to my mother's house. I, I would, I <laughs> Fuck walk, you. I walk out of the room and get choked up, and she'd be like, what's wrong? I was like, I miss my grandmother. Because, like, they, my mother and my grandmother was so nice to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. My my grandmother, too. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, my, my mom is, like, my mom and grandma are Polish, so it's, like, they're kind of, like, that cold. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah, but. Uh, Don't ever my, date an Irish girl. No. They're, they're like fucking ice cubes. Really? Ugh. And, I, and I'm and i so attracted to them. I keep meeting them. Mm-hmm. That's all I meet because that's what I like. Mm-hmm. But they don't have the the they don't have the, the zestful life that Italians have. Right. <laughs> they, they, they need they need like a like a, like to get like some like whatever we have. We got to inject it into them. They don't know. Semen. That, they don't have any passion. Right. Mm. Yeah. And it's not like they it's not like the Irish are like rich or anything. They're just no. kind of like, what are they? Yeah. They just don't express They're themselves. They're just all dead. Right? I hate. Pa- I'm sick of passive aggressive bitches. Uh huh. I want somebody who tells me how she feels. That's uh-huh. what I'm looking for. Yeah. 
But I'm excited about my podcast. I think it's going to be hot. So far, we've recorded three episodes. Uh, I listened to them multiple times. I think they're very, the content, I'm really pleased with it. Nice. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think it's going to be, uh, I listen to other podcasts and they fucking suck. I, except for Drink Champs and I Am Rappaport. But uh, I think this is going to be great. It's funny because you always need like new stuff to listen to. I feel like I'm always looking for other stuff to put on. You know, yeah. I like discovering new shows. So check out Frank's podcast, please. Yeah. Um, and if you're also if you're a strong woman who uh, <laughs> who would challenge Frank, uh, can I tell go you ahead something? Message him on Instagram. I I, I I I I the last time I was on here, I I, I made I said facetiously, oh, if you if you look like this, message me if you're a hot fan. And this one girl did, and like she she's like my ideal. Yeah. She doesn't live here, so I can't fucking... Plus, she has a boyfriend. You said her boyfriend tried to threaten you or something? No, that was another something. one. That was oh, another okay. one. Oh. This one has a boyfriend. Wait, uh, how come you're the only one getting... <laughs> oh, because we're, we're wifed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, also, I'm um, the most... Uh, I think I attract them in with the way I talk. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, this girl's like fucking... She's like a manic pixie dream girl. She's like... Uh-huh. Did I show you a picture? No, but you can still send pictures to uh, sitdownpod <laughs> at gmail.com if, you, if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. By the way, who runs? Won't see it. Who, okay. who, can I ask you? Who runs the, the social media? Who runs the? Well, we both do. We both do. Yeah. Who's, who's liking this fucking chick's photo? Stop liking her photos. Who? Oh, uh, I'm not. Somebody did. Oh, well, it's. I don't know. Get, if it's get, at the top of the feed, you just get, like a get, lot get of photos. Own, uh, get your own uh, fucking. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll go Jesus and follow Christ. whoever this is. <laughs> really? <laughs> Coordinate. I don't know. You just like everything from Should, the. You know, I I can't I can't throw base from two thousand miles away. If this girl lived in the tri-state area, I would have had it wrapped up already. Right. She's she's in the Midwest. What am I supposed to do? I can't throw base that far. Mm-hmm. Plus, she's got a boyfriend. He looks like a Crow Magnum Russell Brand. <laughs> What's? <laughs> he looks like Russell oh. Brand's retarded brother. Yeah, sounds bad. Anyway, whatever. What are you gonna <laughs> do? I think she likes him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not that um, much though. Anyway. <laughs> I could take send anybody. A, I, could send, take, I could take anybody's girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know about that. I have the confidence that I could take anybody's girlfriend. I don't you think couldn't so. take Mike or mine's. I don't yeah, want you. You would take Shelby. No, you would Shelby. take Shelby for Matt. I don't want Shelby. Shelby. Get in here. <laughs> I don't want Shelby. We we'll got a new <laughs> new segment on this show <laughs> called Frank steals your girl. <laughs> I've had crushes on friends' girlfriends before, and I couldn't control myself. Oh no. I had a crush on my buddy's girl, and uh, I used to flirt with her all the time. And then he said to me, he wasn't even mad. He's like, Frank, can you stop? I'm like, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah, that happens. Well, um, so we were like, ah, let's talk about some mob movies. So let's let's get into some of the movies that maybe uh, maybe uh, we haven't seen, you know, because they were made a long who's time your favorite, ago. Who's your favorite gangster actor all time? Um, let's see. I don't know. I guess De Niro for playing uh, the guy with the when he learned Sicilian. That was pretty cool. That was good. Yeah, I want to see. Um, I I asked Frank. No, I'll earlier. go. I'll go. I'll go. Joe Pesci. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. I was going to do Frank Lucas from American Game. That's Gangster. a character. It's a character. Oh, okay. Was he um, an actor? <laughs> actor. You going to go Denzel? Yeah, I guess Denzel. He's That's like, a millennial answer. Huh. Hey. hey. I just want to make sure we get <laughs> hey, Shelby. A she looks like she's in a color mood. <laughs> What's that? She looks like she's in a fucking well, spectacular Well, if you that come home to this cuck. <laughs> just kidding. What's, what's the matter, Shelby? You weren't expecting us? <laughs> come here. All right. Shelby, Frank just said he can take anyone's girlfriend. <laughs> I said but I would I said I wouldn't take you though. Thank you. All right, anyway. I um, like Deborah more. <laughs> <laughs> Every, yeah. She's nice to me. You know what? Deborah Deborah's so nice to me. She's so sweet to me. Not that Shelby isn't, but I, I talk to Deborah more often. Um so let's get let's talk about well, let's start with You didn't even ask me who I like. What kind of back and forth is this? This is my show. I know. <laughs> Wait, let me guess. I thought, yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead. Who's James your Conn. favorite? I thought you were gonna say James Conn. Love James Conn. Yeah. Best, he's he's just is that. He is the guy. Yeah. You know, uh we did a uh, Sonny Franchise. Mm-hmm. That's his that's his uh he's godfather he's, to Scott Conn. Sonny is Scott Scott's godfather? Yeah. Oh. Scott Conn was a good actor too. He is good. We fucking talk. We've said everything we could say on this show. I know I've talked to that before, but Scott Conn is good. He was in Oceans Eleven and Dude, Twelve. Mike has trouble enjoying life. You, I really you, do. You're a misanthrope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You really. You're so miserable. I know. How does that ever put up with you? I don't know. You're a sad man. Um, I don't think so. I think <laughs> he's so yeah, sad. We'll do that. We'll get well, to this in another. You're like, oh, this show sucks. Uh, we said everything. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> What's what is it going to take to make you happy? I don't know. Yeah, well, that's what's a great missing? question. Mm-hmm. You you want what's missing? You want to be a theater headliner at this point already? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's that'll make you happy. 
I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. I don't yeah. know. Who's the, yeah. who's the theater headliner? Out the, of the your friends? Uh, nobody yet. Mark Norman? No, he doesn't Not do yet? theaters. No. Uh, Mike Lawrence? No. No. Nobody, right? Like, Joe's is doing theaters. And, yeah, you but know, he's but not from like, your scene. Yeah. Who did you no, come No, nobody. N- nobody. Nobody from your scene is doing theaters not, yet? Not really. Amy Schumer's like only like a year ahead of you, right? No. She's that can't be true. Way. She no, started in 03. I started 06. She's three years ahead of you, and she's a, she's a fucking stadium comic. Yeah, well, it, you know, everyone's on everyone's on their own little journey. <laughs> she's pregnant. Yeah, yeah. I thought she was pregnant the whole time. Oh yeah, because those fucking arms. Oh, because she's fat. She's so fat. Yeah, got her. She looks like she's got two loaves of bread under her arms. <laughs> <laughs> she sucks in comedy, also. All right, and uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you for <laughs> thanks for listening. Why is she um, presenting everybody? Let me tell you something. I don't know. Maybe it's a little, like an ego thing. Yeah, like Sam Morell's a great comic. Uh, shout out to Sam Morell. But why does he have to have his special presented by that fucking twat? Because she, li- I guess she likes putting her name on uh, stuff. She, I don't like that. I don't, I don't, like, I don't like that either. Yeah. He can, he why, can, don't you, why don't you tweet at her? Tell her she's an f- egotistical I don't know. piece of shit. It's not my you place. You heard what she to... did to Brendan Sagalow? Yeah. Yeah, she fucking... I, would, I wouldn't have let her get up. If she, she would have been like, Frank, it's Amy. Can I get up? I'd be like, no. You kind of have to though. How do you not? I would have said you, no. You would have said no. You know I would have said no. You wouldn't have said no. You know, you know, Big J no Oakus said, said to no. Brendan. He said, "If you would have said no, that would have been so badass." And I was like, "Fuck! I wish it was me because I would have said no." Yeah. You know I would have said no. I don't see how you could say no in that but situation. I would say it. Yeah, but if you're like where you're at, we're I don't not. Know. We're I'd not say alphas. I'm, I'm I don't not know even as high as Sagalo when I was saying no. We're not alphas. That's what it is, Mike. <sighs> I think I think I would. Give I can't it wait up to you. make it so I can tell everybody they suck. Yeah, but th- but then but then if you say no, if, if you say no, there's like the fear that she's you're gonna be like dragged off the stage or something. Uh, but they'll have to physically take me off the stage. They'll have to get the black guys from outside to come inside and get me, mm-hmm. and I and I'll kick them in the face. <laughs> and they were outside before. Let me tell you something. In you my neighborhood, you know, when they used to in the summertime, they used to grab people and throw them in pools, and it was like a pool near the schoolyard. Who, who did that? They would just do it randomly. You know, the, the tough guys in the neighborhood. Uh-huh. One time they were, everybody was quiet and I knew I, they were going to try to do it to me. And they grabbed me and they didn't get me to the pool. I fucking kicked. Every, and they were like, you're so fucked up. Look what you did to my face. I'm bleeding. I'm like, uh-huh. oh, don't try to throw me in the fucking pool. Everybody was bleeding. Nobody Wait, it was, got just, me in the it was just like pool. a gang of kids that would throw. Yeah, yeah. Kids big in the pool. Guys much bigger than me. I was 15. Like grown men. They would throw grown children men. in the pool. I was 15 years old. They couldn't get Why me in the pool. Why did they do that? Yeah, just to be ball breakers. Yeah. It wasn't even anybody's It's kind of shitty though, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't get me in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like that's what that's what it used to be like when you wanted to represent like, your neighbor. I love how idiots, uh, but, but but I love how stupid people are like. Yeah, you know, b- back in my in, in my neighborhood, how we do things. You know, we're like grown men just throw children in the pool. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't I, go I, down I the street. Known, yeah, I was the kind of guy like you know like if, if you're gonna rob a house and you hear a Yorkshire Terrier bark and you still won't rob the house. Because even though you could probably take the Yorkie, it's not worth the aggravation. That's how I am. I'm like a Yorkie. I'll fuck with. I'll, fu- I'll mm. fight to the death. Nice. I'm a Yorkie, baby. Nice. <laughs> All right. So J- James Conn is your. Who's your? Who's your mine was mine was Denzel. Remember? That's a oh, shitty yeah. answer. <laughs> it is a millennial answer. Hey, you guys don't have any black people in your top five. Samuel Jackson's in my top five. Samuel Jackson. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's he pretty good. He's, he's the good. best he's... black gangster. Did you yeah, see fucking Jackie good. Brown? Uh, yes. How good was he in that? Yeah, he was good. He was that so was, fucking he, good. That was weird, though. It was like a weird look that he had. He was so fucking good in that movie. Holy shit. Yeah. He was scary. Yeah. When yeah. he drives Chris Tucker around and <laughs> makes him get in the trunk. I think Denzel Suits. Washington was scarier in Training Day than that. he was in the fucking Frank Lucas movie. Uh, yeah, I don't probably. know. American Gangster was good. I got to rewatch it, but I remember Denzel being badass. James Conn is the man. Like, if I was going to write a m- movie about a wise guy, he'd be the first guy I would think of. Yeah. You know, he was in that movie, uh, The Way of the Gun, that came out in, like, 2000. Yeah, yeah. He was good in that, too. He's good in everything. Yeah. He's so fucking good. Um, I love that guy. What's That's his right. background? What's James Conn's Jewish background? guy from Glendale, Queens. Uh-huh. I love the way he is. He's just like, uh, they interviewed the whole cast of The Godfather because they had a reunion. Uh-huh. De Niro was sitting there like uh, he, has to, he doesn't utter two words, you know. Yeah. Uh, he just, like, he, he's such He doesn't a, talk a lot, right? He doesn't talk at all. He's Pac- a misanthrope. And then Pacino is like a, a deep su- thinker. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Pacino's talking with like a sudden accent. He's like, Do you remember <laughs> when we did that scene with Marlon? Hoo ha. Like, and, and, then, and, then, and then they get to go to James Conn. He's like, Yeah, these fucking guys are out of their mind. We fight. He's just like a real regular guy. He's, he's a regular like, guy. So yeah. down to earth. Yeah, yeah. That's what I like about Lady Gaga. Uh huh. Lady Gaga is so fucking down to earth. Yeah. I see interviews with her. She's just like a. 
And in the movie, yeah. she she's such a regular Italian girl from New York City. Mm-hmm. That she's so like not a superstar. Mm-hmm. I love Lady Gaga. So that's an interesting point because I feel like, you know, you can like like everybody in show. Or, I mean, most people in show business kind of start off from the bottom, but then it's like once you're given power, you kind of become like an asshole. Like you ever hear like like almost every actor and what you, you hear don't, in an it's interview. It's commendable. Didn't she come? But she how came do you, from How money, do you right? do that? She didn't come from Who money. did? Lady Gaga? Her yeah. Fa- her, father's, her father's like a... She had to just took her keyboard around and she just played she was like She was like one of these weird like like open mic, like music open micers. Yeah, she was a music like, open micer. Yeah. Okay. And she would just show up and and yeah. yeah. Wear like she a, said the, re- the difference between her and the character she plays in the movie is the girl in the movie has low self-esteem and she's underachieving and she's afraid of failure and she's afraid of success. Uh-huh. And she said she was never like that. She just went knocking on fucking doors and she was like, I'm fucking good. Good. Yeah, and she is good. Yeah, she's so fucking. I love. I'm like, I'm in love with her. That's man. that. See, that's an inter- interesting thing, and that's something that I never figured out. Like, like, and especially in show business, you really have to like advocate for yourself. And I never figured out how to do that. I think that talented people uh, don't work as hard as untalented people, and that's why untalented people Get make ahead. it faster because mm-hmm. they like, oh shit, I'm not, I'm not that great. Mm-hmm. I better fucking work my ass off. Right. I feel like I'm so good. I'm just like, why isn't anybody just fucking plucking me out? Right. You know what I mean? Right. And fucking, you're, you're a great comic. And, and but, like, but I don't think with you, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of, um, like you're, you're, you're not, you're not like, oh, is this good? Is this the right thing to say? I, I don't think you're like an overthinker. You just I don't kinda, think anything. Yeah. I say anything. <laughs> Right, and then on my podcast, like, it's the same. Who way. cares? Who cares about that fucking Saudi guy? Was he American? Let me tell, tell you to something. Suck my dick. <laughs> I don't. I don't overthink anything. I, my my mm-hmm. podcast is going to be the realest podcast because nothing's going to get edited out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say what I want to say. What about certain words? You say any word. Yeah, any word. Any word. All right. Just, I got no advertisers. I got the Patreon page. What's going to happen if you get like a part or something? And they go back and listen to the podcast, and, and then they can take their part and shove it up their ass. I'll make my own movie. Uh-huh. That's you know I, you know who inspires me these SoundCloud rappers yeah because they said fuck the industry mm-hmm. and they fucking became millionaires yeah you don't need like the who? industry like who like Post Malone oh he was fucking, a SoundCloud guy yeah, he started in SoundCloud yeah oh well, he comes from a rich family so I don't I don't really like him mm-hmm. but like a little but peak, eventually don't you need the help of other people in the industry to like get to a certain point it seems I mean, you can like only, now you can only it's go like, so far without other without yeah, but you can make you could become a millionaire without the industry how. Just doing your DIY shit. And yeah. People follow you. People people listen to SoundCloud. People watch web series. People listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. They don't care about what's in the theater. Mm-hmm. They don't care about what... They really what, don't. They don't care what's coming out on fucking iTunes. Yeah. I, I don't even have an iTunes account. I just have fucking SoundCloud. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah. That's a good... I hate to say it, but like that's a pretty good role model. <laughs> SoundCloud rappers, you SoundCloud made that rappers. sound good because yeah. they do hustle for like everything they're getting. All these, you know. I really like. Rate, uh, I subscribe. found this guy. I discovered this guy a few months ago, and I know I'm late to the party, but I discovered a little peep a few months ago. Found out he's from Long Island. Uh-huh. I got really inspired by him. I think he's great. I think he's like he's my favorite artist of the 2010s. Mm-hmm. You go on YouTube, he's got 75 million views. Mm-hmm. He's got as many views as Taylor Swift. Yeah, I will say that. It's good to also to work at the stuff that you're doing, and, and it, it's also important to hustle. I don't <laughs> so like that you, you got to do both. Po- I don't like <laughs> that they're do making both. people. Uh, they made Norm go on an apology tour just because he had an opinion that wasn't the f- popular opinion. Yeah, yeah. Like what Tracy thinking? Morgan had to apologize because he called his nephew a faggot. It's so stupid. <laughs> I'm never apologizing for anything I do or say. I feel like Tracy Morgan owed his nephew an apology okay, there. I've spoken like a true Midwestern millennial faggot. <laughs> <laughs> where well, you're right. joking. Yeah. So, where you from, Minnesota? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, everybody, <laughs> Stitch Fix. Are you have a trouble shopping for clothes? Well, Stitch Fix sends clothing. You got you got right get, to your you door. Got advertisers? No. <laughs> Maybe someday. Yeah, Maybe. the show is doing good, right? What? It's, it's it's making money now. It's it's doing okay. It's making a couple of dollars. Yeah, it's making oh, a B- couple BTW. of dollars. Uh, what's up with that chick Anna from Red Scare? What about her? Uh, I I I like her. I think she's interesting. She's she's cool, right? You think she'd dig my vibe if she met me? Um, I should ask her. Yeah, ask her. If, ask her if she wants to meet me. <laughs> you should just do her pod. She should come <laughs> and do your she podcast. Should do, you should do her podcast. I want to. I want to. Or meet, she would do yours too. I, yeah. I let me. Can I tell you something? I listened to that whole episode. Mm-hmm. I was like, this chick is fucking sexy. I never yeah. even saw her. Just the way she talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like academic. That shit is so fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's look, into the she, same. Wait, shit. you don't? Do you know what she looks like? No, what she look like? Oh, is she, is she ugly? No. She's attractive? 
She's attractive. You yeah. can follow she's her on AM. Instagram. She can, you can follow her on Instagram. She's got a she's got like a short haircut though. That's fine. Yeah. I like the way she talks. Yeah. I was so I was telling Matt I was uh, I was messaging Matt I was like what's that up would be kind of a good. A <laughs> I'm good like it's group. not my place for him. No, but that would be kind of like a good like a good like an interesting pair because Anna likes Anna likes like working class you know. I love the way she guys. says working class. I love yeah. the way she reduces people to cultural <laughs> stereotypes. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> she was wrong about a few things, though. A couple of things she like said. Like what? <laughs> that the Godfather is dated. Get the fuck out of here. That's uh-huh. a masterpiece. It'll never go. It'll never be dated. Right. <laughs> what about that? And she uh, said that Paulie Walnuts had it in his contract that he can't play a homosexual. That's not true. He had it in his but contract. He couldn't, say, he couldn't play a snitch. He couldn't play a snitch. He didn't yeah. say anything about playing a gay. Uh, right. Wait, so you don't you don't like part three, right? With the Godfather? No. Okay. Just making sure. I like Pacino's performance in it. Okay. But it was a cash grab. Yeah. It was okay. kind of like Halloween, the new Halloween. They didn't have Robert Duvall. Yeah, Robert Duvall's great. He stands up for himself. Yeah. That's I why. just uh, I just texted her. Oh, good. Yeah. Hey, we'll see, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, t- I'll, I'll take it to my uh, <laughs> the burrito place I took you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. I took Mike for a, I took Mike for a burrito before he went to his. Uh, Would that be a nice date? Do you think? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it'd be a nice date. Okay. What is um? What is James Conn's like background? Jewish. Yeah. New York, he's, New is York he working Jew. class or he's working uh, class? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's so fucking good. Yeah. You ever see Thief? Uh, no, but I watched you, the trailer. You, <laughs> you have to, <laughs> Frank. If, I don't have time to watch fucking. If movies. you watch one movie in your lifetime, yeah. If you watch two movies in your lifetime, mm-hmm. watch Thief. Uh huh. And watch Pope of Greenwich Village. Okay, that was that's the other one we're going to talk yeah. about. But um, what 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 do you like about Thief? It's about an independent guy in in Chicago. Doesn't let the mob tell him what to do, and doesn't let the cops tell him what to do. Mm. Comes out of jail. Nice. Has a fucking plan. Finds What's a girl. What's he in jail for? Uh, being a, a heist guy. Yeah, he- heisting. Uh-huh. So he's in jail. He comes out. Sees a girl working in a coffee shop. Tuesday, well, back in her prime. He's like, "All right, you're my girlfriend. I'm going to buy this house." Uh, like he just has everything and there's a scene where he goes to adopt a kid but they won't let him because he has a criminal record yeah it's so funny he's like nobody wants to adopt black kids give us a black kid nobody wants a chinese kid give me a chinese kid i tell you what give me a black chink i'll take it <laughs> he goes because he grew up as an orphan and he right. knows what it's like right right so good michael mann directed it mm-hmm. it's the best thing he ever did he did heat too right yeah yeah he did heat uh he does a lot of bad movies now mm-hmm. but that's a fucking great movie mm-hmm. He's shooting on digital. He's got a hard on for digital. I hate digital. Digital yeah. cinematography is burying cinema. Uh-huh. It's a fucking disgraziata. Yeah. I don't know. This guy doesn't know. <laughs> you know, I know, sp- all, he, I know uh, all about the uh, new cameras you and didn't stuff. Even, what are you, you talking you, about? You don't even work with film. That's like fucking, my job. Fucking peasant. Fucking Do you edit? <laughs> get the fuck out. Fucking peasant. <laughs> I love uh, that. Yeah. I really do. I don't care if the fans hate him. They're gonna throw. They're gonna <laughs> they throw. They're gonna throw. They don't hate me. They're, they're gonna throw yeah. fruit at you tomorrow. Some in Philly. people yeah. hate me. Let me tell you something. Philly, they're brutal in Philly. They fucking. They're brutal. That's the most brutal people. They're gonna be nice to me. All right. What do you mean they're gonna be nice to you? Well, I mean they're not gonna go out of the. They're not gonna like, be nice trip to you me. If you, if you earn not, it, they're not gonna like kick me in my. You know. I told him last rear. night. I was like, our numbers are down. He's like, well, you know, let's just take it easy on ourselves, huh? And like taking these ourselves, we're gonna, gonna be step it exactly. Up. We're gonna be fucking dead soon. They're not down. All right. Frank Liotti <laughs> was a great guest. Oh, thanks. Anna from Red Scare was a great guest. Tim Dillon was a great guest. I'm always a great guest. Outside yeah. of that, you had some fucking stinkers on this show. Okay. Stop with the chicks. Okay. Besides Anna. Okay. What did you read? Some of our, our no, I iTunes reviews. No, listen to the shows. And some of them I don't can't get through them. All right. I'm being very honest. Just because somebody writes for a TV show doesn't mean they should be on a fucking podcast. You think if somebody has a fucking credit, they're going to draw attention to the show? You know what they're draws not. attention to the show? Roy DeMeo. Right. Roy DeMeo's the most like... Roy DeMeo and raw talent. <laughs> yeah, Roy DeMeo, baby. Raw sexual energy. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. Um, okay, so... That is a good point. I like it's her, though. Like, I feel uh, bad now. Nah, You're making right. me feel bad because we'll, we we'll get cut along. It out. We're going to cut now it out. Now when she sees me, she's going to hate me. Now like, we're going to cut it out, All these fucking girls, when they see me, we're they gonna hate me. We're going to fucking cut it out. We added our podcast. Yeah, we added our podcast. I happen to like her personally. Yeah, well, that's fine. All right, so maybe I'll maybe I'll watch I'll watch Thief uh, this week if you. If Frankly, Adi was a fucking great guest. That was a fucking that was yeah. a, he, that was a that was really, fun too. He's fucking great. Yeah, I love Frankly Adi. Yeah, love that guy. Yeah, yeah. That's what's nice about uh, you know podcasting. You get to find you get to pick your talent. I I pick people that I already have a good rapport with. Uh huh. And it's I I have to pick four people a week. You do? Yeah, I, I two 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 a show. Right. 
Oh, okay. I'm I'm getting stressed out now that I'm gonna I'm not gonna remember how to do that thing, the level thing. <laughs> you can always Google all it. Right. Or yeah, ask me it. again. All right. Um, I I taught myself all this shit how to record, how to edit. Now I got to learn how to promote. I mean, you just, you're still gonna finesse it, and you're gonna learn a little bit more and a also, little bit more. Also, I want to say, Thief Thief was what 1981. Yeah. So that was like a time when like you could have movie stars that kind of looked like us. You know, you could have like yeah. a guy who like had a gut. It's interesting what Liotti old, said. You know to what? Br- uh, to bring uh, bring it back to Frank. Uh, by the way, pick up his album. What was it? Confederate Fag. Confederate Fag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a great title. <laughs> he was really nice to me when I first started doing comedy. He saw me at a mic and he told me I was funny. Yeah. Um. What was I talking we gotta about? stick together though. Oh yeah, he said there's no famous Italian American actors under the age of seventy. Yeah, it's true because when they cast us, they cast other people to play us. Right on that show, the Boardwalk Empire, they cast a limey uh-huh. to play an Italian. They did. Yeah. Yeah, they love doing that. That sucks. Yeah. But now you know how it feels when people, you know, when Mickey Rooney played a Japanese guy. I could care less about Mickey Rooney. I didn't, <laughs> nobody thought that was good. Yeah. Nobody said that was yeah. good. What are you, right. how do you feel about West Side Story yeah. and Latinos? But huh? it's a weird thing, Frank. It's almost like we were like fetishized for a little, like Hollywood fetishized for a they little bit. They replaced us with black people. And 80s. They replaced us with yeah, black Yeah, Main Streets is now uh, Get Rich or Die Trying. Because mm-hmm. everybody wants, everybody used it's to like, want to be it's Italian. Like niche, right? Everybody yeah. used to want to be Italian. Now everybody wants to be black. You don't, though. I right? want to go on record and say, I will never, wa- I don't want to be even the most wealthy black guy. I wouldn't want to be, uh, I wouldn't, wa- I'd rather be myself than Barack Obama. And he's great. Yeah. I don't want to be black. I want yeah, to be no, Italian. That's, I like, that's I like, a good sentiment. Why but you don't want it? Well, <laughs> be, I like, wanting I, to be yourself is good. Wanting I, to be I yourself think. is good. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Like, that's the the root of what we're yeah. getting. Relax, man. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's I, a totally I, episode. Listen, well, so wanting you, to be what? yourself is good. <laughs> I, so you, you got an email about somebody who was upset about my take on uh, Mexicans? Or something like that. It was uh, about immigration or ICE. I think it was ICE. I don't know. Yeah. We'd have to look. Yeah. All right. You understand this is a comedy show, folks. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But throwing fastballs, I guess. I guess it is. Yeah. I'm a satirist. <laughs> a satirist. I'm a satirist. <laughs> satirist. Let's talk about uh let's talk about King of New York real quick. That's so good. Yeah. Did you see that one at least? No. Oh, you cocksucker. The trailer. Christopher Walken. <laughs> you I don't, did watch you don't the trailer. see nothing in the trailer. Except uh, a white well, guy. That's why I want to ask you about it. It's a great movie. It's about a a, a, a guy who Runs the New York mob with all black crew. Mm-hmm. It's so funny, it's so good. So that's kind of cool. It's very stylish. But he's 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 coming out of prison too. Yeah, he's coming out of prison. It's directed by Abel Ferrara, is one of the great great directors. Mm-hmm. Do you agree, Matt? You went to film school. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't really remember that. What you don't know he, who Abel Ferrara is? No. What else did he do? <laughs> I'm sorry. What else did he direct? China Girl, um, uh, The Bad Lieutenant, Miss Forty Five. Yeah. He's a fucking icon. How dare you? Bad Lieutenant yeah. was good. I got into the technical side real fast. So, what do you want to be a best boy for the rest of your life? Yeah, I'm below. Do you stay the to watch the credits? Then. I got a friend who's a screenwriter, and we saw Halloween together. Mm-hmm. And he stayed. He goes, "Where are you going?" I go, "What well, do you want to know? Who the key grip is? I don't give a shit." <laughs> yeah. Do you stay for the credits? You stay for the credits? I used to stay for the Marvel ones, but then I got over it, and then I was like, "I'm the first guy out the door." Mm. <laughs> yeah, I get the gist. Halloween sucks, by the way. It does. It's all about female empowerment. <laughs> Everything's about me too. I can't get. Wait, away I from think. It. I think. Yeah, I know. I think Deborah saw it. it. Really, a lot of people are like cashing in on that, right? It made seventy-five million. The first one is girls in their underwear getting shot in the face. Right. But, you know, not one girl took off their clothes in this movie. Uh huh. And forget about. It, there's a hundred black people in the movie, mm-hmm. like actors in the Halloween. How many black people live in the suburbs? Yeah. Not that many. And then uh, they show trailers. Did you know? Jamie Foxx is in There's Robin Hood. Black people in the suburbs, though, right? It, maybe not that many. Yeah, she's babysitting for a black kid. Uh-huh. A white girl babysitting for a black kid. I never heard of that. And then, and then, um, and then right. show, I'm sure that's never happened. They, 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 it's forced diversity. It's forced diversity. Wait, wait, wait. Uh-huh. So I'm this like, is the new Halloween. Yeah, yeah. I'm not okay. done yet. So then, fucking, uh, they show the trailer for Robin Hood. Jamie Foxx is in it. First of all, did they even have black people back then? When does Robin Hood take place? <laughs> They didn't even come up. They didn't even make up black people yet. When did Robin Hood is it like before black people? Isn't it? I think it was like in England in 1400. Yeah, was there time? any black people in England in 1400? Um, I'm there could sure. have been some. That oh, I think so. I don't I'm think pretty so. Sure. I, Frank, I'm sure there were a few black people. That I doubt yeah, it. Yeah, come on. But were they the main something? sidekick to the fucking main white guy? It's a book. It's a book. Does it matter? That's not even it. That's not even it. 
But then Aquaman, you're going to deny Aquaman has a black friend. Aquaman has a black friend. Oh, there's no black people in the ocean. <laughs> there you go. Now you can't even stop. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Do black people live at the bottom of the ocean, Matt? <laughs> no. Aquaman has a black friend. Oh, that's all this fucking PC bullshit. <laughs> Only white people live at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> it's everything. It's like it's like forced diversity. Right. But only white people live at the bottom of the ocean, right? Black people don't like to go swimming. I've been on the beach with black people. They stay they stay far away from the water. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> Just imagine like someone like gives the notes to the studio notes like, Yeah, it's a good script. Um, but you know, black people don't like the ocean, right? I was talking about this at, at I, I was talking about this very subject the other night at the Creek in the Cave, and a black comic came over to me. He goes, he goes, Yeah, we don't go in the ocean. I said, Thank you. I'm glad you said it. But that's like a, like a cultural thing. But they just make sure they put black people in every movie. I'm not saying they shouldn't be in movies. I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's a, f a couple, maybe a bunch not, of black people that like organic. the beach. It's not the black people be in these movies are not organic. But okay, but but when Louis <laughs> did his uh, show, he cast the mother of his kids as a black woman. Yeah, so he, like, he was just trying. Like, to, he was trying no, to be. But he, what's wrong with that? Uh, Why can't we suspend our disbelief and be like, oh, okay, yeah, who but cares? The kids weren't who fucking cares? The kids weren't mulattoes. Who fucking cares? No, Who Louis fucking was, cares? Louis show was very weird. It was very surreal. Right. And and that's it was kind of like a David Lynch show. Yeah. In fact, he had David Lynch on the show. Right. He was so trying what's to be wrong like, with doing that? I don't understand. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I'm just saying. Every, I know a lot of white people that don't have any black friends. Yeah. I happen to have a lot of black friends because I'm I'm like one of they consider me one of them. Mm. But like a, a lot most you don't you don't have a ton of black friends. I got a I got enough. Do you have more than six? More than six? Yeah. I have you do not, six. you're lying. And how, it's not true. Before uh, you did Nimesh comedy. Nimesh Patel, did, Akash Singh. He's not black. Suba Agarwal. <laughs> They're fucking brown. Before you did comedy, did you have any black friends? Yes, I had black friends. No, you did not. Yes, I did. In, in Princeton, New Jersey, you had black in friends. Ha I'm from Hamilton. That's even worse. That's true. Like There's no Trenton. black people there. No, I had, uh, let's see. You had no black friends. <laughs> I, had, I was friends with Gene DeBras. I didn't like, they didn't like come over my house or anything. Your first but. black friend was Michael Che. Isn't that true? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I think this I think this fella's gonna be I feel someone. Bad. I feel Hi, bad. I'm Mike Racine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's can we be friends? Yeah, that, that, you know, these fucking black comics, I feel bad. You for don't them. have any fucking black friends. I, I got friends. a million black friends. You have black people over your house? Yeah, all the time. They're doing a podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. This week I got PD coming over. He fucking Wait, robs yeah. people. I don't think he's gonna to, rob me he though. He used to. Yeah, well, I don't invite over black people who go to college. I invite black people over who Wait. used to rob white people. All right, shut up for a second. Let me think of my black friends. Michael Che. <laughs> yeah, sure. Michael, I guess Michael Che. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Barnett. Kevin Barnett. There you go. That's two. All right. And you met them in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> Where's their growth? Oh, my God. Uh, Yamanika. All right, that, that's four more. <laughs> it's it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be weird being put on the spot. Uh, Janelle, I'm pretty close with. I, I know Janelle longer than you do. You do? Yeah, I met her when she first oh. got here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Before everybody saw the brown nose in her. Yeah. She loves me though. Yeah. When she sees me, she gets excited. Really? Yeah, because I can you she, blame her? She's only I, human. Because I keep it real. Mm -hmm. She likes that. Right. I think they do. If you're it pr maybe it is refreshing for people, to, like if you're racist, for them to just hear it, so that so you don't have. They don't I don't have to think worry they think I'm racist. It. I think they think I'm just you know I say these things to be funny, which is true, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they appreciate it. But a white person hears me say this shit, like, and they're like, "Oh, Frank's a racist." Like, how many people say I'm a racist on the show on this podcast? No, they listen they to this podcast. They go, "There's a bunch of fucking racists on this show." What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah, fuck out of here. But you know that you're just. But you, most of the time you're trying to be funny, right? Right. Or you just yeah. I, I like, I like so when you say like who cares about the the Saudi guy that got killed like that's just you that's just you being funny right right is, or is that how you I don't, I is don't, that how you genuinely feel I I I because you're either like a genius or, or yeah you're that's, like a, a, that's a great question <laughs> because it is I love. am a genius I'm a comedic Art. I'm a comedic genius yeah I'm one of listen there's a couple of geniuses mm -hmm. Mark uh, Mark Norman is a genius you you're, think Mark Norman's a genius I think he's a genius comedian mm -hmm. I think Joe List is a genius okay uh, and I think I'm a genius. I'm a, thing, I'm a comedic genius. We now, should go on tour. Show. I think I, 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 I think that I'm one of the top, top ten comedians in in the, in the city, mm -hmm. and not just on my class. Mm -hmm. I put myself in the same category as everybody. Right. So I think I'm top ten in the city, uh -huh. and I don't even think I'm fucking being. I'm not trying to be provocative or, or cocky. I know it's true. Yeah, but you know that some of the stuff you say is like gonna bother people. Right? I don't give a shit. And it might. Yeah. They can kiss my ass. I don't care what a liberal thinks about anything. Mm -hmm. what, does it, would, it, would it matter if like one of those geniuses thought differently about you? Most comics like me, especially the good ones. Yeah, that's right. true. But like uh, something you said that bothers them. If you got a problem with Frank, take your fucking ass to Chapo Trap House. <laughs> 
One time I said to a black comic that I didn't think hip hop was really should be considered music because they don't play musical instruments. And we got into an whole argument. And he said I was racist. I said, why? I, I still like it. Mm -hmm. I just don't think Run DMC and NWA and fucking LL Cool J should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't well, think Well, no, because it's racist because you're saying that their stuff is lesser than your stuff. It is lesser than uh, the New York Dolls you're and the Ramones. So it is less. So you're saying that white white music is better than black music? When you music. play a musical instrument, you're immediately on a different class than somebody who plays a drum machine. Yeah, but it's still it's still a skill to like write raps and stuff. It is, but right? it's not. It's, I don't. It's not music. It's fucking something else. It's different. It's a sub. It's sub music. <laughs> right. So it's it's <laughs> lesser than it's, it's lesser, it's than, less your, than music. Your it's white than, music. Hip hop is less than hip -hop, music. hip hop is less than music. And I love it. And I've been collecting. Yeah. I have. A, I. I. I have, I've been listening to it. So since music with instruments is better than the the best. You, the best rapper, better than Nas. And you can't compare the Black Crows to Run DMC. The Black Crows are fucking musicians. Right. So Run you DMC like an, is not musicians. You like an orchestra it's like, more than you like the, a the band. Thing with like the thing with like gay marriage. Stop being stupid. If you call <laughs> if you call gay marriage something that's not marriage, you're saying it's lesser no, than. That, that's not a good comparison. Hip hop is. But you're more, saying hip hop is less than music. I think I think hip hop artists are more like DJs. Than they are musicians. Mm -hmm. It's more like they're more DJs. Mm -hmm. And I, I was a DJ. Yeah. And I love hip hop. I like electronic music. But like when you say it's not music, then what is it? You're you're making it. It's something electronic. Other. It's electronica. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. The Ramones deserve way more credit than NWA. Mm. hundred way more credit. They play musical instruments. They wrote songs. They didn't just go. Yeah, but any shithead can like pick up a guitar and. Oh, you think so? You know how hard it is to play guitar. But this that, is what bothers me. NWA yeah. is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Johnny Thunders is not. And this Johnny Thunders invented 100 genres. He came out with the New York Dolls. He inspired David Bowie. Then when he was with the Heartbreakers, he inspired the Ramones. He inspired the, the Replacements, Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, just to name a few. He inspired all these bands. Who what, the fuck did NWA, what's this guy's NWA name again? inspire? Biggie and Tupac? Big fucking deal. What's his name again? Johnny. Johnny Thunders. He's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The hmm. New York Dolls are not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Heartbreakers are not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Those guys, Johnny Thunders is more important. Put it this way. This is how I put it in, in, in terms of influence. The Beatles, mm -hmm. Elvis, Johnny Thunders. Those are the top three influences in music. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Thunders is nowhere near the Rock uh, and Roll Hall of Fame. What about the, the black even... people that Elvis stole his style He didn't from. steal anything. He, he combined he combined R and B with gospel and country, and right. he invented rock and roll. So two Just like Little Peep combined hip hop with emo music, and he made emo trap music. He, he, Little Peep is like Elvis. Mm -hmm. Little right. Peep is the new Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> He's the new Mike. Elvis. <laughs> All right. I don't know if anybody's saying this, but if I'm the first guy to say it, I want my credit. Okay. I don't know if I'm the first guy comparing him to Elvis, but if I am, I want to be fucking on the books with this. All um, right, you're on the books. I'm on the books. I'm, I Little put Peep it, is iconic. I put it in the notes. He's fucking iconic. When I hear his music, I get my hair goes up on my my arm. Yeah, I love that fucking kid. I'm All right, not so a let's fan of it. let's get into. You're not. <laughs> no. I feel like it's something. I don't know. I can't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it a shot, but I don't know if I could. I'd be able to get into it. Um. Okay. Let's get into the Pope of Greenwich Village. That was a movie. 1981. So fucking good. Eric yeah, Roberts. Eric Roberts and Mickey Rourke. So like. T so um. Give us like the long and short of what the movie's about. So these two knock around guys, they're in their thirties. Uh, they're working in a restaurant, and the young now just just right there, I feel like that movie wouldn't get made today. Where you go, ah, hey, these just two guys. Yeah, of know? course not. Two two working guys. It's a miracle who are, like, it got losers. made back then. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So but I feel like at least back then, like there's something about um, you know, movies back then. It felt like there were more independent movies that were like not that like kind of inexpensive to make they took chances and back then took, you understand yeah. in the yeah. 70s and the but it was 80s. cheaper to make a movie back then right relatively it must have been it you could have made an independent film back then for like fifty thousand. you still can mm -hmm. i don't know if it's different now nobody's taking chances now mm -hmm. you don't have to pay for film but a lot of times you can overshoot and that's then, like, why like i love the movie eighth grade because it was the only it. movie that came out this year that it didn't make any made 13 million which is not a lot of money mm -hmm. And it was, what was a the great, budget, though. The, the budget was probably like four million. Yeah, but Bo Burnham directed it. You know, Bo Burnham. Yeah, yeah. He fucking hit it out of the park. Uh -huh. And the girl who played Did the you see role, Lady Bird. Yeah, I didn't like Lady Bird. Oh, okay, I thought it was very overpraised. It was only because a woman directed it. Right. See, eighth grade is directed by a man. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody cares. Yeah. Lady Bird was so fucking Fuck. generic. I saw that movie so many times. Yeah, I seen Lady Bird so many times. Shelby you know, liked eighth grade. You, you know what's eighth grade's amazing. You know what's better than Lady mm -hmm. Bird? Pretty in Pink with Molly Ringwald. Way better. 
Is that the one with the uh, dong character? No, that was uh, 16, 16 Candles. Candles. Okay. This is the one with Dice as the, body, as the, as the bouncer. Yeah. Uh, I love Dice. Dice is in, uh, uh, he's in the movie with Star Lady Gaga. Born. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be Mac and nominated, Best Supporting Actor. You think? I hope so. Yeah. Well, everybody in that movie is going to get nominated. Sam Elliott, Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga. It's going to get Best Picture, Best Screenplay, Best... Best everything. How okay. devastated would you be if it didn't get nominated? It's definitely going to get nominated. You know, it's a good didn't. movie. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll be mad. <laughs> Crazy Heart. That was a good movie. I heard it was good. With Jeff Bridges, yeah. Anyway, um, so Pub of Greenwich Village. So two yeah. two knock around working guys. Yeah, so the older one is more responsible. His name is Charlie. He has a dream of opening up a, a restaurant and moving out of the city with his wasp girlfriend. And uh, his younger uh, cousin is Paulie. And he's, paying, he's always betting money on the, the horses, taking money from the mafia, borrowing money from the mafia, always getting into trouble, always stealing at work. He gets them both fired. He's kind of like a fucking idiot. Yeah. Yeah. He gets them fired. Now, Charlie's trying to buy the restaurant that he he's, works at? Yeah. No, he's trying to, like, save up and, and buy a restaurant upstate. Mm-hmm. So, fucking, uh, Paulie gets them fired because he, 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 he doesn't give the check and he puts the money in his pocket or whatever. He gets them fired and then he gets, I got this idea, we're going we're gonna to rob a fucking uh, a place. Turns out they robbed the mafia. Now the fucking mafia is looking for them. And uh, the girl leaves them. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. It's now really the funny. The funny thing about Paulie, because like what I saw in the, the preview was like, it does feel like he's very confident and yeah. it does feel like stupid people tend to be very, con- that's like a fundamental truth of yeah, life, yeah, right? Yeah. Like some of the stupidest people are very confident. But the acting and you, in like, that movie, follow them. Johnny Depp has often said that he didn't study acting. All he did was watch a Pope of Grand Village. Really? He said because you see the be- you see two different kinds of acting. You see Eric Roberts, he's, he's like really wiry and like external, like and really, and then Mickey Rourke is very everything's introverted. And yeah. It's like, and they play off each other amazingly. And Mickey Rourke has said to this day, he said, "I never worked with a better actor than Eric Roberts." Really? He said that. Yeah. Yeah. And when he won uh, for best actor, at what the- happened, to Eric Roberts? I don't know. And he's Julia Roberts' older brother. He's Julia Roberts' older brother. He is, fell out of favor with with the industry, and he became like a B movie actor and a director video actor. And I don't know why, because he's great. Uh-huh. He's a great actor. Number one, he's fucking handsome. Yeah. I don't know what. I don't know what. He's not mm. on drugs. I don't think. I don't know what. I like. I know why Mickey fell out of favor. Mickey was outspoken. But I don't remember Eric Roberts being outspoken. So yeah. I don't know what it is that made people not wanna. Fuck with That's him what's sad about Mickey Rourke because Mickey Rourke was like a legitimately great actor, and like Amazing. all he wanted, all he wanted to do was be a good actor. Yeah, he even like started boxing because he didn't want to be thought of as like a pretty boy. Yeah, right? yeah, he and hated then, being a pretty boy. Yeah, but you know what's funny? But then what ha- What what happened? Uh, he was just very outspoken. He was turning everything down and taking smaller films instead of big. They offered him everything. They offered him like the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, he, like he turned everything down. Yeah. He turned down Hunt for Red October. What is that? I mean, I guess you have to kind of play that game a he little bit. He wanted to be an Hollywood. artist. He wanted to be an artist. And, the, and yeah. it just kind of fucked him. But then but then he made The Wrestler. That and was that was his big comeback. Yeah, big comeback, yeah. But the thing about but he Ma- didn't really have much. Like, what did he do after The Wrestler? Iron Man 2. Oh, right. He probably got a ton of money for that. Yeah. But he, he works consistently. And uh, he's doing a new... I just saw a trailer for something. He, he doesn't look the same. He... He had a lot of plastic surgery, and he doesn't. He's not. He's unrecognizable. Mm-hmm. But he's really physically fit. He's like, he's a sixty-five-year-old man. He's fucking jacked. Mm-hmm. I, lo- I love seeing guys that old jacked because that's. I feel Hell like yeah. I, I want to be that guy. Right. Yeah. Their bodies are like tight, but yeah. they're like kind of wrinkly. There's like wrinkly well, because he had all the plastic parts. surgery. Uh-huh. Eric Roberts is in his sixties, but he looks great because he had no surgery. Right. Yeah, I'd like to get fit just once and just hold it for a while. I'm I know sure. I got to do it. I'm like, when am I going to do it? I'm, I'm recovering f- from I'm my second surgery. I just had a surgery in, in September. Hmm. Recovering from it. Well, well there's a, a surgery. Who's, Hernia. who's the Who's the girl in that movie? Daryl Hannah. Yeah, right. And there's a line in there where she goes, "Your cousin lives in a fantasy world," but yeah. I feel like uh, I don't know. Sometimes like life is kind of bleak, and you have to live in a fantasy world. And like, she, are there he, any lies that you tell yourself? He has a great line in there. She says, "You don't lie to yourself, right?" I never lie to myself. Yeah. She says to him, "I'm very, I'm very." Uh, uh, like my ex-girlfriend was upset with me because I uh, I would be very honest with her and I'd be very honest about you know our chances of making it and like she wanted to hear lies uh-huh. and I don't lie I'm like listen we're probably not gonna make it <laughs> Who, wait you you said that I mean I said I'm I'm just honest I'm like yeah. like she's like she That's was not a, from the movie you you said in, that. in life I would, I yeah. say shit like that yeah, I'm just yeah. like she was in a comedy competition one time I'm like listen Sue is in this competition and she's way ahead of you so don't don't think you're gonna beat her yeah yeah 
I wasn't, she got all upset that I said that. Right. So now she found somebody who lies to her. God bless her. Good, she found yeah. somebody who lies to her all the time. Right. Isn't that you like know, kind I would of say, like I would a tell sabotage a thing different... to do before, you know, like especially in like stand up where it's like confidence. No, but, but it's almost like I would rather somebody tell me that. Like, you know what I used to do? She, she's a very because... talented painter. Yeah. And I'd be like, this one is great. This one doesn't look anything like Chris Rock. And, and, and like, I was very honest. Uh huh. I'd be like, 50% of your paintings are great. These ones are not so good. Yeah. And she would take it to heart. Yeah. So now she's got a guy who lies to her and tells her that everything's amazing. Everything's great. And I, I've yeah. seen her paintings. Yeah. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. Right. But she she used to send them to me, rough drafts. But it doesn't feel good to live in a, in like a fantasy world. It doesn't. You know? I don't think anybody just, should. Yeah. It's just way better to... Be, I like when people are honest because, with me. Right. Right. But she, I feel like she says to him, uh, when are you going to outgrow this guy poorly? Uh -huh. and, he, and he goes, maybe wasps outgrow people, but Italians outgrow clothes. We don't outgrow people. And I love that line. Yeah. Nice. There's no loyalty. Yeah, fucking wasps. Italians are very loyal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I'm a Scorpio. Scorpios are fucking loyal. Really? By the way, Scorpio season starts today, baby, October 23rd. Oh, nice. What's so that my, my My magnetism is on high high voltage. So, like... So, you get more sex, or...? I, I get more opportunities in Scorpio season. Oh, I see. Mm. Yeah. Both both career and sex. Everything. Everything just Good comes for my you. way. Good for but you. But I think there's sometimes, like, with my girlfriend where I'm like, ah, uh, you know, things aren't working out, and then she'll be like, well, you know, what if this happens? And I, I don't like... I don't like delusional stuff. I don't yeah, want yeah. someone to be delusional, because then because it's it's almost more comforting when you go... Oh, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna. Oh, oh it's probably not gonna work out. Yeah. And then you can move forward with that information. But at least it feels, I don't know, it feels more. It's better for you to feel honest about what is happening. Do you take than I, to delude yourself? I like being underrated sometimes, because yeah. like, it's. I know this is probably gonna sound ridiculous, but the other night I was at the open mic at the Creek in the Cave on sa Saturday, and they put me in the last group. Of course. So I'm, I'm in the other room. I'm drinking margaritas. I'm screaming. Yeah. Everybody's like. Frank, lower your voice. Rebecca's coming down the stairs. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank God she didn't hear me. I was fucking screaming. I was like, fuck this mic. So then they go, Frank, you're, you're next. I go, yeah, you're going to fucking have it. All of a sudden, fucking like, the, the room was dead. It was the end of a mic. There was five people in the room. I, I got on stage. There was 35 people in the room. They all came in to watch my set. Really? And I brought the house down. And I got a new joke that I told Matt that's been working. And, I'm, and I was like, and I was like, I'm probably the most popular comic in the, in the New York comedy scene at, at my level. You know, I'm, I'm still doing open mics, but there's nobody more popular than me and there's nobody funnier than me. Right. I'm, the, you know, and I don't, maybe people might say, oh, you, what are you going to be the king of the open mic forever? But at least I'm the king. I'm the king of something. You're the king of something, yeah. Hmm. The king of something. I'm the king. I'm the king. Yeah. I'm the king of comedy. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, if I'm That's gonna movie, if too. I'm gonna get passed at the stand by uh -huh. those fucking uh, that Irish guy and the and the and the, and the other guy, uh -huh. I want to be funnier than anybody there. I want to be more anticipated than Big J. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I don't want to play the fucking stand. Mm -hmm. I want to come in there as a fucking threat because he's like the best comic there, right? Yeah, maybe they put him last because he's so fucking good. Yeah, I want to do better than him. I want him not to be able to follow me. Yeah, nice. Well, I should we wrap? Wanna, what? I just want to be able to be on the, the lineup. I'm happy Matt, to be here. Matt, you barely work at comedy. You barely apply yourself. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. It's fine. All I right. deserve it. You don't. I, I spread <laughs> out in too many avenues. Mike probably. already did a fucking special. He, he, yeah, he, I'm done. I'm just coasting now. No, but you did a fucking special. Now next is your one hour special, yeah, right? I guess. If anybody Get Amy Schumer to present you. If anybody buys that fucking it. whore. <laughs> <laughs> fucking with her fucking flabby arms. Say, hey, Amy, with your flabby arms, come introduce Mike Racine, please. Hey, she's she's a, a wonderful-looking pregnant woman. Yes. We, well, okay. and, and, all right. And not just her. We think all pregnant women are beautiful That's at the right. sit-down. Right, that everybody? It's a great place to plug our new <laughs> sponsor. I have a very attractive... Uh, <laughs> our new uh, sponsors <laughs> love, loves... Uh, Can I tell you something? Love, yeah, I'm, well, having a, I'm having a, like, a bunch of female comics on my podcast, uh -huh. all attractive. Yeah. I, I'm not now, why, now, why is that? Because I, I only book good-looking female comics. Uh-huh. And I just want that to be known. Why? What if someone's... What Listen, if there is a place enough? in this world for ugly women. Mm -hmm. Just not on just my not podcast. Your podcast. I hey. don't think that's wrong. Frank and I did a podcast together. It was a show where like this girl like talks to male comics about their sexist material. And uh, <laughs> Frank goes, yeah, I used to do this joke where I'm like, yeah, you know, guys got to stop giving their dicks away like the Indians, you know, giving away beads <laughs> or like giving away land. And uh, She wouldn't air the episode. She wouldn't air the episode, which is... You know know what did you ever said? redo you know it? You know, no, she wanted me to come back and redo it. You know what her reasoning was? What? I come across as too much of a nice guy. 
I'm like, but I am a nice guy. You are a nice guy, yeah. So why do we, she want? She want? She want a confrontation. I said, yeah. I'm not coming back. I never went back. I still get along with her though when I see her. Yeah, I, I like Janet Hyde, but uh, she wouldn't end my fucking episode. Fine, it was a great episode. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Also, free plug for Janet Hyde, her podcast. Yeah, like anybody's Dude listening to that to fucking it. thing. What's Some, the name? What's the name of the show? Doesn't matter. You were on it. I was. I was not on it. It's called Dude Talks to a Lady. You okay. know what's a good podcast? <laughs> Drink Champs. Who who does that? Nori from the uh, Capone and Noriega, the rap group. Oh, he interviews old, he interviews hip hop people in the hip hop community. Okay, and they drink uh, Dom Perignon and smoke blunts okay. while they're doing the podcast. Okay. Also, I am Rappaport's a great podcast. That's uh, Michael Rappaport. Yeah, it's so podcast. good. Nice. He said something. He came into work uh, and he said something that stuck with me. They're like, uh, they asked him like if he ever like regretted not taking any roles. And his answer was uh, saying, like, that was disrespectful to the people that got those roles. And I was like, oh, man, this guy is, like, thinking about his career and, like, the, well, the way he, feels he like, that way. Maybe he legit people. feels that way. No, I don't he, know. He, I just, I would have never thought about it. He talks shit about people. He, he, he talks shit about Spike Lee and the owner of the garden. Like, he talks about people. Nice. He, he, I mean, I'm sure he bites his tongue. Not, not you know, it, it, yeah, it's, he it's was not on easy a, to be easy a show. guy yeah, who never right. bites his tongue. I don't know. There isn't a lot of people like that. I'm like that. I, but um, a lot of people bite their fucking tongue. What are you going to do? I don't bite my tongue. Yeah. All right, boys. Are we wrapped? Yeah. We're at time. Uh, so the name of your podcast again. It's uh, Terra Dome. Terra Dome. With Com- Frank Terranova. Coming out on Thursdays, right? It's, November uh, no, 8th. We're launching November 8th uh-huh. and every Thursday after that. And there'll be premium episodes for the premium members. It's $5 a month and you get a free episode every week. Cool. And uh, follow me on Sweet. Instagram at the real Frankie T. Check it out, um, guys. Support us on Patreon if you want. Email us sitdownpod at gmail dot com. Uh, Twitter sitdownpod. Instagram sitdownpod. Uh, we love hearing from you. Let us know how we can take this show to the next yeah, level. Ra- rate us huh? five stars, and rate we're gonna get a whiteboard. Bo- we're gonna get a whiteboard. Oh, we, Matt ordered a whiteboard off Amazon. So yeah. once, once I think once we have that whiteboard, everything will be it's fixed. Really gonna be a lot better. We're yeah. gonna have a, just a better quality can show. I say yeah. One more thing? yeah. The first ten people who contribute to my Patreon. I'll, I'll uh, talk about you on the show. Send him a there shirtless you, pic. You heard it. <laughs> uh, just tell me something about yourself. Uh, if you want me to shout out, say what's up to your chick, whatever. Nice. Yeah. I don't know. Is that a good incentive? <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Steel, you're good. I'll, I'll yeah. promote your business if you got it. I'll, I'll, I'll say it's good. Whatever. I just want, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to get the, the, the ball rolling right. with, the, with the Patreon. Right. Sure. All right. I think that's it, everybody. Bye-bye. Peace. See you.